Hi everyone, welcome to the next video from our Rooms of Wonder series um, of all our uh, magical items and we have three feathers today. Now these are very small um, but I think we'll manage to uh, do something fun with them. I am actually going to start with the centre part of each feather and I'm going to do each of them the same. Um, I'm just looking at my colours. Um, I usually do them in a warm grey, so that's what I'm going to do. If you look at these um, on actual feathers that you pick up off the ground, they're often almost white, a very light grey. I'm actually going to use the warm grey 5, um, just so it shows up a little bit against the pale paper. And what I like to do is do it a little bit harder, so with more layers. Sorry, I've got a book resting under here fiddling with it and then a little bit less towards the center this one is quite small so it may not show but I just want to try so more layers here and then less here more layers there and less towards the middle I was just making myself a coffee and thinking about um, how to colour this for you. Now I've done a lot of feather pictures before, I'm actually going to do that bit dark and that bit light like that. Um, and I've done lots of colours, I've done metallic, I've done purple, I've done green, I've done pink, I've done purple, I've done blue. I wanted to try and do some that I haven't done before just to show you some different colours to make it more interesting for you. So I was thinking, I don't think I've done red, orange or yellow. So let's do that. Why not? So with the red, we'll start with the red one. I'm going to grab two reds. I'm going to grab a darker red. This is, I think, this is the middle cadmium red. Okay, which is a quite a dark red. And then a much lighter red, the impaled geranium lake. If you have a look at the ends of the red, you can see they're quite different. And it's nice to have two shades. I'm just going to sharpen because they're very fine. And uh, I'll show you. Now, this is going to be quite similar to the feather that we did um, before, um, but, but a different colour. So what I do is I put a little bit of the darker colour on each end of these little bits, if I can and try and fade it so that it's darkest at the ends. It's quite tricky when they're so small. With this main feather, I'm going to put my darkest bit down the middle. I can go right down this middle line. I'm going to totally ignore Johanna's very, very pretty um, picture that she's drawn on there. I'm sorry, Johanna, but it's too small. And then fade that and then do a line, quite dark, along the edge, all the way along. I know we've got a harsh line at the minute, and then we just scumble the edge, like that. And hopefully we'll be able to, oops, I kick something under my desk then, I don't know what it was. I've actually cleared out under my desk, I had all my, um, just doing the same on this side, um, all my um, books my completed books and my not started books um, under the desk in here which was okay but um, to keep them away from the dust but we're almost done so I moved them out from under my feet now we're moving to the pale geranium lake if you don't have um, polychromos you can use any dark and light pencil and now we're going to scumble along the edge and bring that colour in hopefully you can see what I'm doing a round and round movement just to blend them together. Don't worry about that, it'll come too. Now what I want to do is try and find the rough middle to leave a little bit of a white gap. I'm going more gently now, a little bit more slowly so I can leave just a bit of a white line. Can you see? We're going to do the same on the other side. It's a sort of gently along the very edge. Now this is a bit narrower on this side. There we go. 
Now we've got actually left a white line and I'm hoping that makes it look like our feather is shiny because feathers tend to be a little bit oily and shiny. Maybe not when they're um, um, sort of been dried out when you find them after a while. But uh, to start with, and we've got two tiny twins. <laughs> now I need to look them up for you. Um, the orange is... Um, I'm pretty sure that's my Derwent booklet. That's not going to help me identify the um, polychromes. Here we go. Um, the orange glaze and the dark chrome yellow, I think. Yes. So although this one is called yellow, for me that's quite orangey. So I'm going to use these two as oranges. Okay, and we'll do a lighter yellow feather, which I'm getting quite scared about because I'm not very good at colouring with yellow. But if, I, if I'm if i encouraging you to go out of your comfort zone, I've got to do the same thing. So here's our orange glaze. I'm going to do the... Oh, I forgot to do that red on those, didn't I? So the pale geranium lake on these little bits, just bring it into the middle a little bit, leave a bit of white for shine right in the centre if you can. Probably not on that one. There we go. Gosh, my boiler is making so much noise. I need to figure out what it's doing. So orange glaze. No one's using any water. The heating isn't on. Why is the boiler making such a racket? What is it doing? I don't know. I could better read the manual. So like before, all the way around the edge in quite a heavy layer. It's not compulsory to go out the lines. All the way around. I am thinking of putting a pair of magnifying specks on my Christmas list. I found some that just fit over your normal specks because I'm a specs wearer. But my um my bifocal isn't very strong and I can read more I can see close up stuff more easily without it on um, I'm not going to scumble that because it's so narrow I'm going to go straight in with the dark chrome yellow and see whether I can get it to work let's do these first this time and when I said to the um, optician oh I can see better without them sometimes to read still he's Oh yeah, you will find that. And I don't really understand. Surely the whole idea of having a bifocal reading lens is that it makes it easier to read. But it makes it easier to read from this distance that I'm looking now. Um, but if I get closer, put my head really close to the book, I uh, I can, I'm much better off looking underneath. So I don't really understand it. <clears throat> There we go. I'm going to leave that there. So we did the same thing again. Now we have our scary yellow one. I think I'm going to use the um, Ochre's Naples type yellows rather than the yellow yellows. I have no idea if that makes any sense. So I'm going to use the light yellow ochre and the Naples yellow. Can you see the difference? We've got a sort of brownie yellow. For me, I think that'll be easier than trying to go for the really light cadmium yellows. We'll see what happens. So this is the light yellow ochre. Oops, you can't see. Can you see? Silly thing. Now we've got no bits. You could go over these if you want them to look coloured. I don't think it's going to show up that much with this yellow. We'll see. So same again. Hard line up the centre and the same here. Again, ignoring the pattern. I take it all the way around the edge though. I'm feeling hot with my cardigan on, but I'm going to be cold if I take it off. It's one of those sort of days. <sighs> okay, now this is a bit of a fatter feather than this one, so I think we've got space to just do a little bit of scumbling along the edge, just to slightly fade that colour out, to blend it to make the blend a little bit easier when we add in the lighter yellow. There 
we go. Some even those. There we go. So I'm just going to sharpen it and then we can do it. Oh, looks quite autumnal leafy, doesn't it? Um, Naples yellow, I guess there's no reason why you couldn't use this technique for autumn leaves. It's not something I've ever tried. But as I say, there's no reason why not. So I'm just going over the edge where we scumbled to bring some more yellow into the towards the centre, leaving a white line. There we are. So that's really quite simple. But that is um, that's feathers in different colours to how I normally colour them. So I just thought that would be interesting for you. I hope that was okay. As I say, quite quick and simple <coughs> today. Excuse me. But um, yeah, we've got other videos to um, make and crack on with on this page. So much fun to be had still. But for now, thank you so much for watching. Um, I'm going to go and get a coffee. <laughs> My voice is gone. Um, I hope you have a lovely day. And happy colouring.